Hello, crypto world. Welcome to The Chart Historian. My name is Justin, and on this channel, I delve deep into crypto charts, exploring chart structures, fractals, and patterns. So in this video, I'd like to talk about Casper, and in particular, I'd like to talk about the Casper bull run structure. So I would like to start getting you familiar with that structure. So for those of you who are new to this channel, Casper has a repetitive macro structure. We have been slowly grinding our way through what would be a sideways range-bound time that comes before the bull run. So this sideways range-bound time exists after the decline from the bull run and before the next bull run. So let me jump back to the very beginning of the Casper chart and show you that macro structure so you can get familiar, and then we'll jump back to where we are today just to show you how the chart is developing when compared to that structure. Okay, so this is at the very beginning of the Casper chart. Now I'm on a one hour candle, and to do that, I use CoinTrader Pro. This allows me to go back to the very beginning of the Casper chart on a small time frame. And it's important to be on a small time frame so you can see the nuances of that macro structure. So this is that sideways range bound time that I was talking to you about. It comes after the decline and before the next bull run. So it takes place here again and it takes place after the decline and before the next bull run. So we are currently right here working on this bounce, or if you will, this bounce. Now, since we have two iterations of this, there's the chance that Casper will follow one over the other, or it could sometimes be a combination of both. However, in this case, it has favored this one much more, and I will show you what I'm talking about. Let's jump back to where we are today and examine this structure right here, copy and paste it onto today's chart. Okay, so as you can see, that structure does match fairly well. So we have moved up, we have, we have done this little consolidation right here. I believe we have peaked out for what we are going to do on this move up right here. So we are in the decline phase. I believe we will begin on this bounce soon. We'll have to see how this materializes. So this decline still has likely more to go. We'll have to see again how this materializes. Now it's important to remember that when a fractal repeats, for those of you who are new, the structure repeats but the timing, height, and depth, those do not copy over. Those will be original every single time a fractal repeats. So it can give a veneer of originality to the structure, even though it is following the basic idea. So we can see that even in this. So it's similar, but it's not exact. There's differences. There's nuances. So for instance, right here in the fractal, it moves up, whereas... In today's chart, it kind of stair-stepped up, so it was a little different, but it was moving up. That was what it was doing. So as you can see, we have this part to go. Now, this part could take some time right here for this sideways part to play out. We have this decline, too, if it continues to follow this structure. Now, at any point, it could switch over to the original one, which is this structure right here. Let me put that one on. So as you can see, while there are some similarities, I think as of now, it is following the other structure a bit closer. So how this continues to play out, it could be a mixture of the two. It could continue to follow this one closer. We'll have to see how it materializes. Whatever it's going to do, it's going to be an original iteration of whatever it is following. So even as we saw this stair-stepping thing as it moves up, that is original to today's structure. It's not what the original fractal did, but it is doing what it should be doing. It should be moving up at this point, and that's what it does today as it did in this fractal. So let's jump back to the beginning, and let's dive into what that bull run structure looks like. Okay, so here we are at the very beginning of the Casper chart, and the Casper chart starts with a bull run. So you have this move up, and then it pulls back quite drastically before eventually moving back up again and coming to a peak. So 
that is the first iteration of a bull run structure on the Casper chart. And it's important to be familiar with this because it is these original ones that will be copied over and over again throughout Casper's history. Although this is not a complete bull run right here. It's missing the lower part of the bull run. But as you can see, it moves up, comes to a peak, and then it does this topping structure. It then declines and comes to a bottom where it does this bounce right here before moving back up into that range-bound sideways time. I divide this time into three fractals. So here is that first part of the bull run structure, the part that is missing from over here. So it is a consolidation before moving up into this consolidation right here. This one, of course, is larger than this one. So here we are zoomed in and you can get a better look. However, even being on an hour candle, this took place so fast, it's still kind of pixelated. So it's really challenging to see. But what we can take away from this is that there are two main consolidation points. This one right here, it then moves up into a bigger consolidation right here with a bigger pullback. And then from this, it breaks out, and that's where the peak is. Now, notice how drastically it drops this time around before going into that topping structure, whereas originally, it didn't drop as much. This topping structure took place much higher up. So when a deviation takes place, on a chart, it's always good to remember that deviation because that deviation can show up again later on in the future. So here is that topping structure. It takes place on lower down, and then it goes into that decline. There's that bounce, which marks the bottom of the decline. It then moves back up into its range-bound sideways time again with those three fractals. The first one is basically it's two rough idea of a wave. You can see that over here a little clearer. Here's one wave, here's the second wave. And it's the second wave that kind of gets sloppy or draws out really long. So we see that over here. This next fractal in that range bound time. So price moves up, it drops, goes sideways, moves back up again, creating this bowl type structure. We see it here. It moves up, drops, goes sideways, moves back up again, creating that bowl structure. So this time around on today's chart, we followed this move down and we are now working on this bounce right here. So now that we're in the next bull run, this bull run is actually the best bull run to look at because this one took longer to play out and there is more detail to it. It wasn't just this fast flyby bull run that these other ones were. So we see this first consolidation after this large bounce. And then, of course, we have the next consolidation further up, which is the larger one. But if we examine in between these two consolidations, we see two smaller consolidations that weren't really visible on these other ones just because they happened in a very short amount of time. But I imagine if you were able to zoom in on a real small time frame, we might see the same kind of thing at play in that one as well. So we see one consolidation, two consolidation, in between these two bigger consolidations. So that is something that we should be prepared to confront once the bull run begins. I imagine this bull run is going to take some time to play out. The chart is moving at a much slower pace than it did back here in the beginning. So as it moves slower, there's more nuances, more details that begin to emerge. And even these two smaller ones, if it takes longer than this to play out, which I would not be surprised if it does, we might even see more detail emerge. There could be another, this little move, this little tiny dot right here, maybe another real small pullback. It's very normal for a structure that is moving up to do these waves as it moves up. But what we see from this one is we see a major one over here. We see a major one here, and we see these two smaller ones in between those two major ones. So just like the other ones, it breaks from this major consolidation and finally 
shoots up and forms a peak. Also, just like we saw in this bull run, where it declined quite a bit more than this one before that topping structure, well, we have the same concept at play. Remember, I told you, remember those deviations because they can show up again. We see that here. It really, really fell. It just plunged. And you have that topping structure way down here. Now, once we get into this part of the structure, it begins to slow down. It goes much slower. This sideways range bound time, you have to be on a day candle for most of it to see the structures because it's going at a much slower pace. I'll show you these briefly. I'm going to jump over to trading view. Okay, so I'm on a four hour candle. And even then on this topping structure, it's, it's very zoomed out. So it's hard to see the nuances. But here's that topping structure. It then goes into that decline where you have the bounce. Okay, so I zoomed in here on that decline. And you can see that bounce at the bottom that is where the decline terminates. It then moves up into that range bound fractal the first one where it is basically two waves here's the first wave here is the second wave and just like the original one over here where that second wave kind of drags out and is kind of sloppy over here. you see it over here we see the same thing happen over here where it just drags out it takes forever to kind of terminate before going into the next fractal where we have that move up that decline it goes sideways, it moves up again, forming a bowl structure. Let's put a little depth there to it. So this one has, uh, since it's going at a slower pace, we see more detail. We see how it actually kind of stair steps out of this bowl structure up to that next peak. So we are now entering into that bounce over here, and as we see over here, so here we are zoomed in closer to that bounce. So once this bounce completes, whether it is several weeks, several months, we will begin to start moving up. And here even we see a smaller little correction. We will hit a substantial correction. That will be the first big correction. We then have those two smaller ones that exist before getting to the even larger correction, which eventually price breaks out of and it comes to a peak so i'm not going to tell you where to sell but i'm going to tell you where i plan to sell so i plan to sell somewhere within this part right here now if you were to take measurements from here to here it's not the same on all three bull runs so let me show you what i'm talking about so what i did is i took this measuring tool so this middle line is the middle line above this is 50 percent above it below it is 50 percent below this middle line so i put this middle line on the top of this major correction and i brought the bottom part down to the bottom part of this major correction so this right here is the same size as this was pretty much it's a little over now the second time it plays out it's not quite so neat so here is that 50% line at the top of this major correction, and the bottom part is at the bottom of this major correction. It didn't even go to halfway up this 50% move up right here. It just <laughs> it stalled out. So that is a possibility. This is why it's tricky. I plan to sell once it breaks out of this major correction, but there is the possibility you might want to sell sooner rather than later because it could top out before moving up to the upper part of this measuring tool. Over here on this big bull run that Casper experienced, we do the same thing. We put the 50% mark here and the bottom right here. This time it was much more similar to that original one where it moved up a little bit beyond this 50% upper part. So basically, this upper part was around the same size as this correction right here. So we have two out of three instances where this upper part was about the same size as this correction right here. Will it do something like this in the next bull run? I don't know, but that's something for your consideration. So 
I haven't fully decided where I will sell. It would be a bummer to be greedy and to hold on and experience something similar to this, which is a possibility. So just be aware. So that is a look at the bull run structure and the overall structure of the Casper chart. So to sum up, after this bounce, it's going to move up. It's going to have a substantial correction right here. There'll be a smaller one, a smaller one, and then the real big correction. This big correction has the potential to be similar in size to the move up above this big correction once it breaks out. But I wouldn't count on that because we have one instance over here where it didn't do that. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, it'd be much appreciated if you hit that thumbs up button. You know, one important thing, I'm not a financial advisor, so please do not use this as investment or financial advice. That would be a mistake. If you're not a subscriber yet, I recommend hitting that subscribe button. I will continue to follow this chart as it continues to develop. You're not going to find this type of TA anywhere else. This is original TA. The whole macro structure is something that I've discovered. And as you can see, it has been following it. So if you like what you saw, think about hitting that subscribe button. I'm so glad you caught this video. I hope you catch my next one. Have a great day and bye for now.